Hi, I'm Ike, and this is Draw Process, where I share my process of becoming my practice, of making comic books, of being a sequential storyteller, uh, and I get to show what I'm drawing uh, and how I work through those problems, but also how I work through the mental side. Here are the thumbnails. Uh, we've got Sword rushing towards the boss, that woman. Uh, I She's got her you know, angry expression, then pulling out her sword. It's a very fine fencing sword. So I wanted that to be clear as she pulls it out. And then she lunges at him, almost gets him. He has to jump back, which makes him lose his momentum so that we get a little pause here in this shot. Uh, I chose to change this up a bit though. Um, I pushed that final panel over to the right, still let it be like a full bleed panel. That's, you know, borderless uh, panel. Um, and then on the left, I put an image of Sun and of Farah because I wanted to capture their their faces and locations um, before what happens on the next page. Um, and uh, part of that was the next page was going to start with Sun's face, but I chose to move that to this page. And then also Farah wasn't going to be on the raft yet. But I realized it would help me speed the story up if I let her jump onto the raft on this page. Okay. There are the borders for the panels getting put in place. Um, the last panel there, it doesn't have a border, but I still have a pencil line to show me where the border would have been. So I have an idea of where the safe space will be uh, to put, you know, things that won't be cut off in printing. Um some different uh, comic book uh, services like web services or printers um, are going to have a requirement that there's no words uh, too close to the edge. Um, so uh, it's good to make sure you can keep things within the safe zone. Um, so my loose, fast part of the pencils, um, finding... You know, I've got a pretty good thumbnail there uh, of I'm kind of recreating what's on that. And that required some scribbling and finding it. So uh, I'm trying to get uh, just more and more simple or um, synergized with like the work that goes into thumbnails isn't wasted. It's part of what goes on the page. Only do as much on the thumbnail as I need to. So the page is more um, where the work occurs. But um I feel more free on the scrap paper on the thumbnail page to scribble and figure out some shot ideas. Uh, if I were to do that on this page, uh, well, and figure out panel layouts and stuff, I, I just can't do that on the page. Not right now, maybe someday, but uh, right now it doesn't seem to fit well. So I figured that out early. Um, so that's why these drawings get to be very loose. I got to find uh, the basic uh, layout and position of figures. Um, I changed the third panel, decided uh, to show a, you know, a front view of her pulling her sword instead of kind of over the shoulder. Uh, I thought that would actually be a better. I've been keeping up with the sketchbook. I need to share my experience with that. Um, I should make a separate video to share that. Um, I'm. I'm not going to be able to share it like weekly the way I do this. And, and I'm considering what I want to do with social media, that maybe social media could be a place where I could log those quicker uh, thoughts and, and shots of, of the uh, sketchbook um, to kind of, kind of like I do here to share my uh, journey and my process in uh, becoming my practice of my art that I, that I could expand that into, let's say Instagram um, or something to, uh, to make it really part of what I what I can share that uh, that that I don't want to turn into an entire video uh, that takes a little more uh, work uh, to make these videos. Um, but I need to share what I'm doing with the sketchbook. I, I don't think it's anything uh, special yet. You know, I'm still figuring it out. Um, but I want to share my process of figuring it out and what decisions I'm making. And um, it takes a little extra brain power to um to pay attention to the thoughts i'm having and processing 
while I'm working on the sketchbook because I keep making these, if I really reflect on it, a bunch of micro decisions on how I'm approaching drawing it, what subject matter I'm, I'm approaching and why, and you know, just how I might see it evolving. It, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to keep track of, have that self-awareness of what, what my experience is. Um, but I can at least share, share what I can, what I can remember and, uh, and, and share in the moment. So, um, I might do that with, uh, Instagram, um, like through, through just, you know, uh, pictures from the sketchbook with a little bit of commenting about what I'm attempting. Um, but I, I know I need to make a video here of that at some point. Um, it's, it's becoming, uh, very interesting and, and I definitely want to share it, uh, because I'm here to share, uh, my process of becoming my practice of, of, of the art of making comic books, of sequential storytelling. So, uh, it's, uh, it's interesting. Um, I really have the task before me here to share my, uh, my processing, like what I'm act like unfiltered in a way, share what I'm dealing with. Um, because it's helpful to me and, and, and to you all, um, if I can, if I can really share my journey, my process. Uh, so I'm still figuring that out. <laughs> I say that on here a lot. I'm still figuring this out. Uh, it's not about, you know, like I had a recent breakup and uh, she moved out and that, you know, that's a big life change. Like it's, I think it's a good thing ultimately, but it's a big uh, life change and it, it means extra time and emotional, you know, drain and all that and, uh, being, you know, all the feelings. So, um, you know, that's the kind of thing that, um, I don't necessarily want to share that much of here. Um, not because it's like too personal necessarily. It's just not really the goal of, of what I share here, but, um, but I say it, uh, I guess in the sense that, I'm going through a lot of changes right now, and my experience is uh, when I go through changes, they're huge growing opportunities. I've been a lot of different things in my life, uh, and it, it's always it's always a good uh, opportunity to, to change. and And when I change personally, uh, the way I see the world, uh, my personality to de to a degree. Uh, I've been able to change some of that. Um, the way I experience my body, uh, being in relationships. I mean, the way I am in my own dreams has changed at different points in my life. Uh, I think that's an interesting, uh, ex you know, evidence of seeing yourself and seeing people in the world differently. Um, but when I go through those changes, um, my art changes too. Uh, not only my practice of the art, like how I draw, um, as far as like the way that I practice or um, go about the effort involved, but uh, the way the drawings look change some uh, as I change. So um, the, the personal struggles do uh, become a part of the, um, you know, this channel, what I need to share about becoming my practice uh, to a degree it's involved. Um, so yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot of challenge lately. I've been saying yes to a lot of things, uh, relationships, uh, responsibilities, uh, work and, uh, it's kind of, it's uh, risky. not, I guess you could say risky, like, big commitments. Um, but I, I find that I, I tend to run kind of introverted and, uh, tend to not say yes to things out of fear of failure or letting people down or that it'll take too much energy. And I'm really stepping into just, you know, 
saying yes. Like it's, I guess you could say stepping out in faith. I might've said that in my more Christian uh, days. Um, but uh, I still find that there's something to that uh, for me. I might put it like uh, if I have a an idea, a dream, a vision of, of who I could be, of what I want to embody, um, that I can find uh, the uh, strength and ability uh, to become that, like the... Um, the ability to reflect on where I'm coming up short and uh, the ability to come up with creative solutions of how to become more like that. But it's hard for me to do that if I don't have the idea of who I could be or, or what that could be. And it's similar with the art. If I have like a sense of what my art could become more like, uh, then I can move towards it uh, much more quickly. Um, yeah, they're all, they're very, very linked to my personal changes and, and, uh, or development, personal development, and then uh, your development as an artist to me, they're very linked. Um, let's see here. Uh, this, uh, at the time of recording this, I'm actually like maybe two weeks ahead of when I drew this page. So at this time I had, had not done very much sketchbook work yet, but soon you're going to start seeing more of the, uh, maybe any effect that might be having on the pages. I think I'd started it slightly by this point, but, um, yeah, I think it, it might be starting to show an effect, uh, on the pages and, and that'll be interesting. Like I want to share that here. I want to share my actual, experience at trying these things and if it saves other people time and pain to you know learn it you know let me learn it and try it then then that's the idea um all right here's a good example uh there's some pretty strong perspective on sword's body it's exaggerated uh his pose is very like uh angular like uh like kind of stiff, but not like very dynamic and stretchy, but um, stiff and straighter lines, straighter edges to to the positioning of his arms and whatnot. Um, that ca captures a sort of energy, like it it implies a sort of energy, um, and it's kind of cartoony and easy to draw. And when I, when I get that, especially with that extra. Um, uh, change from the the perspective the like kind of exaggerated perspective um that is getting like closer to something that feels really right where i want to go and uh, i like it because it has nothing to do with this problem i have of how simple to be uh like or or how slow and careful to make my line work versus uh you know fast and expressive so because uh, that's like a constant problem, but this is like not even in that area in a way, because um, I could do it fast or slow. It's um, with the line work. It's just the way that the figure is constructed and posed. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's been interesting. Um, shadows, yeah, I mean, I've had a continual... Uh, change in my relationship to the shadows um something uh that i've i've learned um mm -hmm. my my shadows used to be more uh extreme like uh you could throw parts of the body entirely in shadow and then maybe just give a little white edge to them to to help you see what the shape is um and and the shadows were more um accurate to how where the shadows would be based on the light source and now i'm starting to use blacks more to indicate form uh you could say like a, a value or something that like uh you know like a shiny shield here a shiny shield will have this black chunk on it and that's to indicate the changes in value on the reflectiveness of the shield. And I do the same thing with like bodies, like on the leg and on, on the arm and chest, like I'm giving blocks of black 
that simply indicate added form, three dimensionality uh, to to the flat drawing. Um, and then I mix that with some shadow positioning that that relates to the light source and where the shadows would actually fall. Um, so yeah, that's something. And then uh, having to draw so many figures on these pages, I'm I'm playing with how cartoony and inaccurate I can be uh, with the the figures, and still be happy with it. Uh, Mm. Yeah, going off of feel here, um, this is kind of a strange pose. His his elbow's facing up and his hand is completely flipped over, so um, it's opening up the armpit area and like the tricep into your into your view. Uh, so that's a kind of a strange a very uncommon position you would see, but I mean, it's, it makes sense when you're sword fighting, he's got a swing, he's swinging the sword down, um, and rotating his, his shoulder and arm around. Um, but that, uh, that makes an odd pose that is harder to capture. Um, so, uh, I, you know, I did my best with it that, that felt right, but I know that that's an opportunity to do the two things I'm trying to do. Like, um, get simpler in the structure I give these figures so that I don't have to add detail to that spot, but also to understand that those pieces of anatomy better and be able to, um, to draw them. And it's, yeah, it's tough. Cause it's, uh, you know, I don't use a lot of lines to indicate things, but I do have to throw these blocks of black on there the way I like to do it. And those blocks of black have to be positioned uh, in a way that makes sense. It doesn't have to be like, to me, it doesn't have to be anatomically correct exactly, but it has to give form to the figure um, in a, you know, in a good way. So an interesting way or whatever you want to say, but not necessarily accurate. Um, but still, you know, that, that it helps to have that knowledge of, of anatomy and how to draw. Uh, to get those shapes, those forms in the right place, those black chunks. Um, yeah, here's another example of a more extreme perspective. I mean, she looks kind of small on the page compared to him. And her leg is like, as it comes towards him, is kind of like elongating. Almost like an animation where when things are moving quickly, they, they might bl like kind of blur or stretch. Um, like the old simple ball animation when the ball is getting close to the ground it like gets elongated and stretched and then when it hits the ground it squishes um, and that kind of thing but um, but yeah like uh, the it implies the perspective it's not exactly accurate but it's believable and it and it's energetic and it's like okay this is cool this is getting there um, Another way that I feel I'm, I'm getting there. Mm -hmm. There's the whole page. At this point, that's what it looks like in hull. 11 by 17 size paper. Yeah, I got this real basic skeleton here for sun and just start to build him on it. Yeah, even with the hair there, there's these blocks of black, even though he has kind of blondish hair. Oh, and they sort of are where there would be a shadow on his, on his skin, but I'm not putting that much, it's kind of a blend of the two, but it, I'm not using it as a shadow on the skin, I'm using it as added form to to the hair um, just another example of how I'm I'm playing with uh, that and as I try to find my the way I like to do it I don't like to be super symmetrical 
in the drawings it just feels more organic where he's a little off center his arms aren't in the exact same pose you know he's leaning to the side a little bit um just they feel more alive if they're moving a bit yeah here i'm just like well i behind him i could probably see some of those the guys on the boat that were with him earlier i could probably see one of them right there so i'll just squeeze him in right there make sure i'm not creating too bad of tangents uh like ways that he his lines hit the the lines on sun um throw in a little background uh and this is just from imagination like uh, i didn't have to work out the perspective and stuff really i'm just like basically i think from this angle i could see this much of the building um but it's not flat i'm not i'm not totally faking it and just throwing in these props that are flat they are still in a sense of perspective it feels alive that's part of why I don't make my figures too symmetrical is like none of the like backgrounds are either. And because it's just easier to just be a little more impressionistic with it um, or exaggerated. And so if my figures are more exaggerated and the backgrounds can be too, then it starts to feel cohesive and it feels right in its wrongness. Like it can, it can feel more right. So maybe that's one way of putting some words to, to what I'm doing or trying to deal with here. Okay. Um, let's see what else to talk about today. I actually keep some notes sometimes. If I have a thought, I'll, I'll write it down. Uh, I guess what I've been talking about, maybe I can continue more on this. It's sort of like, how do you show up in, you know, I've heard people say this, you know, how do you show up in your relationship? Uh, let's say like romantic relationship um and uh and then the thought of like what i'm dealing with in my art it's sort of like how am i showing up in relationship to the artist and myself you know the um and this is all metaphor i don't like i'm not trying to get all uh, metaphysical here but um I, to me, it, it's it's an interesting thing worth considering is like, um, am I critical? Am I overly harsh and critical? Or am I, um, is the artist in me the the producer of, of art through hard labor and being professional and uh, conscientious and uh, punctual and all that? And, and then my relationship to that is I have to, you know, is it a healthy relationship, let's say, but am I, am I the authoritarian boss that's like harsh to my artist, inner artist? Uh, am I, uh, am I coddling it and protecting it like some child um, that, that, you know, it's a fragile, uh, innocent, uh, creative thing that I need to protect, um, um, you know, and like, maybe, maybe you could think of it like relationships, like, is this, is this healthy or not? Um, can this person, uh, grow in this relationship or is it, or is it hurting them? And like, am I helping the artist in me? Do I have a healthy relationship to that? Um, cause sometimes that even includes, you know, boundaries or like challenging, uh, challenging that part of you, you know, like with, way you know for example if you're coddling your artist self you'd be like hey you kind of suck like at this and that or like you know like you need to work on this or that um you need to be honest about where you really are with your with this or that aspect of of art um you need to get thicker skin you need to whatever you know like maybe that maybe that would be uh useful to to look at more truth there but then if you're too harsh to your artist self maybe uh maybe that would stifle um you know make it more like if you think of it like a child are you making it more like uh is it going to become perfectionistic and internalizing and like unhealthy in some way i don't know i think it's a, a useful question it's something that came to me that i wrote down 
um, as uh, just something I might talk about here. I'm not, I'm not sure what, what's worth saying about it because it just starts to feel a little too uh, relationship advice uh, area, which is not uh, not something I like doing. Um, let me see if there's anything else I can say on it. I don't know, I guess, uh, you know, um, I don't know, believing in yourself, maybe like I operate, you know, I, I believe in the artist in me that it is capable of doing great things. Now, uh, there is something that rises up in me that's like, I'm never going to be great, like in the sense of like Shakespeare <laughs> or Leonardo da Vinci or whatever. Like there is incredible greatness throughout humanity that uh, we all have to come to terms with, like our limitations. Uh, but um, but at the same time, yeah, to believe that that I'm that I am an artist and I am capable of bringing this out in me uh, and that what it needs is nourishment and discipline and whatnot and uh, that that it can grow and blossom. Uh, and I don't know, maybe that's that, that's how I maybe I think of how I show up with it is like I do need to, I mean, it starts by believing that it is valuable. So, of course, I'm going to want to have the best relationship with it and nourish it and invest in it. Um, but it means, yeah, I guess maybe that maybe that's kind of like sacrifice because uh, I do. I do need to give and take care of, you know, the artist, giving it time to grow and learn. I have to invest in it. Uh, and sometimes I don't want to, but I do it because it's like this is, you know, what this is what it needs. This is a part of me I can't deny. Uh, so I'm going to do it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what else to say on that topic. Um, hmm. Relationship with yourself as an artist. Uh, I, I tend to think kids know how to draw better than adults. <laughs> like, um, there's... There's definitely something to, you know, an adult, you know, typically more of an adult <laughs> having discipline uh, to to train themselves and train their eye and learn, you know, obviously. Yeah. But um, there's definitely something very healthy in, in how a child can embrace being an artist, they, you know, they're good at playing these roles. They can play pretend that they're a mommy or whatever. Uh, and it's, and then we forget how to do that. Like we, we develop a, uh, judgmental, uh, you know, eye on ourselves, uh, that'll catch us and not let us do and be, um, And then I think we got to unlearn that for me. That's, that's part of it is unlearning, uh, that, that sort of, I don't know, evil eye on, on myself so that, uh, so that it, I can kind of innocently, uh, and playfully be and try being different things. And there's a lot of pressure to not do that, uh, to get, you know, to be serious and dedicated and mature and grown up and 
don't, don't it's puritanical really don't waste time don't be inefficient um that scarcity mindset that I'm going to run out of time and attention and energy if I, if I if I allow myself to go down various paths um yeah I'm not I don't find that uh, a positive in my life uh, uh you got to get past that for me uh I mean, for one, just like, you know, in finding more pleasure uh, and innocence in, in your in your journey and being an artist and not, you know, learning to not be self-critical, just kind of like to love yourself and love life more. Um, that's definitely part of it. Um, and it's not necessarily that I, you know, try to tell myself that, well, it's, there's not a scarcity of these things. It's unlimited. Like, I've, it, it's so scarce. Like, the older I get, the more scarce it gets because I'm literally running out of time as I get older. Um, and I get busier with other things in life, like a family, uh, where, uh, you know, you have limited time and resources and energy. But... Um, For me, like I, I literally have to get like existential with it that uh, I'm okay with failing and I'm okay with running out of time. That like to try all these different paths and to be playful uh, is not like it, maybe the resources are scarce. Maybe I will run out by, but um, it's the way I would rather live. And it's the best way to be, even if it results in uh, failure or unfulfilled. It remains unfulfilled due to running out of of it, of energy, time, and so on. Um. Hmm. But I've got the puritanical side. I've definitely got a perfectionistic, hardworking, disciplined side too. Uh, so, uh, you know, I don't know for me, for me, I, there's a balance. There's just an awareness to gain about them. I'm not, I, sometimes it's like, I don't feel I can change as much as like gain awareness of different, uh, facets and, uh, areas in myself and I can, uh, be them or not, you know, like be more choosy in, at moments. Uh, but Yeah, I've got the, I have the more serious side, um, but I want to get more playful. Uh, so like, I mean, one example of that would be, um, I want to start sharing a lot more, uh, with you all. I want to share a lot more of my practice and just be really open about it, uh, and not filter, not try to be the expert, but just share what I'm thinking, what I'm dealing with, like what I'm trying to do in, in, in the sketchbook, for example, and then it fails. Like uh, maybe, you know, maybe I end up failing and going down the wrong path later, or be embarrassed of, of that way of thinking I had or the way I drew that. I'd be embarrassed later of it. Um, this, you know, the playful way of thinking is, like, oh no, this is cool, this is great, like, it's okay to not be perfect, I can be childlike, I can just share what I'm thinking and doing and drawing, and, and I don't need to be embarrassed or ashamed of, of uh, adolescence or childhood, you know, um, and so I can just share, and, uh, and that would be being playful and open versus, uh, the more perfectionistic, disciplined, harsh side, the puritanical, uh, hardworking side. So, um, and that's, yeah, that's definitely what I feel myself needing to do, what I'm moving into here. Um, I need to show up in life more. I'm trying to do that with every relationship I'm in, with this channel, um, with you just, with, with how I draw, 
you know, that uh, spend time with my kids, whatever, whatever I'm doing, I'm, I need, I want to really show up. And not, not because it's going to lead to greater success and make you more effective. And yeah, you'll really get that promotion. You know, like it's not that grown up mind. It's uh, that, that puritanical side. This is a, uh, it will, um, it's the, it's the better way to be like, it makes it, it's, it's not only more enjoyable and, but it leads like, it's, it's just, a, it leads to a different sort of life and way, you know, art and, uh, is an example, I guess, of like w one way of trying to do this that uh, others can, you know, pick up and run with and make even more out of than me someday. So it just makes me feel like, yeah, more connected to, to everyone, to humanity. To, it feels like a more loving act. Yeah. And that maybe that gets at this, you know, this childlike aspect too, that like, that I would do things out of love that, uh, that I don't, I don't just half-ass things. Uh, or just do them out of obligation or just, you know, boredom or whatever. But, you know, if I'm going to play a video game, I want to like sit down and really enjoy it. Not be beating myself up about it or whatever. Uh, or just like vegging out. Yeah, that's what I try to do on the pages here. That's what I'm trying to do uh, in these talks. I'm just sitting here talking into the, the microphone by myself um and yeah i mean i'm just trying to uh just show up what's what can i say what am i processing i because i don't have time to like script all this and and think that hard about it ahead of time i just have to start showing up in life and if i if uh if my heart's in it uh and the vision you know where i'm trying to go is in the right place it's going to uh it's going to be the right choice. So yeah, here we are. Um, it's kind of hard to see there in the shot there in the, uh, but those are, uh, crocodiles grabbing a guy, um, that had fallen off of the raft during the fight. And so they, it's, you know, just to show that people have fallen off the raft and they are getting grabbed. Just a fun little, feature to enrich the world a little more this is kind of annoying you know how this the drawing this raft is annoying uh there are uh there are board line there's lines to show the direction of the boards on top there's ropes that i put over the boards just to give it a little more life and texture um, so that it doesn't just look like board lines that don't make sense how they could be constructed like that. So the adding the ropes, um, but with all the figures on this raft, it is really hard to have space for, for the, and I don't like to put a lot of lines on the page anyways, but, um, I got to make long straight lines and I got to put them in places that aren't going to create tangents with the figures on top of it. That's annoying. <laughs> Um, this one was a smaller raft drawing, but sometimes the raft gets pretty large on, on these panels. And then it's even, even harder to get like the perspective and, uh, and the lines, right. But, uh, but no, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with the choice. Like originally they were going to be on a boat, um, but to draw a fight on a boat is harder than to draw it on a big flat raft, uh, just to draw it. Uh, in this space is easier. Um, so that was partly why I chose to use uh, the, just a big flat raft for the fight scene. Give me a nice open space to fight. And I liked the thought of, you know, it's clearly right there on that water's edge where there's crocodiles. It keeps that, that uh, danger of like right there.
uh, I had to go through the previous pages and make sure I've got the right number of guys with the right injuries. Uh, there's like two and a half dead guys on the top left of this raft here. And, and along that right side, there's two guys with arrows, uh, a guy with his hand cut off, um, a guy that's kneeling. What happened to him? I don't know. Maybe he was shot also, I think. Maybe three guys with arrows in him. Um, yeah, just craziness. This uh, this panel was pretty complicated, I guess you could say. Um, this is the angle I chose to go with, but that one is complicated. You got Farah jumping onto the raft, and she's in the center, main figure, but I have to show the boat she came off of, and behind her, there's not only a two dead guys and a guy kneeling, but then just off that, just past that, is the, the canoes with uh, sun on them. And that starts to get like many layers of people and little things. So um, I, I managed to, to scribble it in. And like, yeah, I mean, that's, that's another thing is like if, if you're trying to like get better at drawing uh, and drawing in comics, um, it is only in the comic that like certain problems become natural. So you have to solve them, which, and, and then that changes like how you draw. Like um, you have to sometimes draw very small people in the background and very large people. And, um, and then how you choose to simplify for those situations um, or complicate them like that's hard to recreate in a sketchbook it's hard to hard to recreate if you're not just like actually doing the drawing of comics so um, I mean yeah I do recommend it like I do recommend that if you want to draw comics draw comics like you can obviously draw in a sketchbook and other things too um, uh, do I mean yeah design design work graphic designer there's lots of things that can can carry over and be useful but um uh, but you do, you know, at least trying to draw some pages of comic work will, uh, will, yeah, create situations and problems that, that you get to develop solutions for. And then you start to learn a lot about how you would like to do it. So, I wonder if the next issue, if I'm going to, um, I mean, like this, this issue, I don't know how long it's going to be, maybe 50 something pages, uh, this crocodile city, our intro, you know, to, uh, first son and sword as a series, but, uh, the future ones I might do full color or like a limited palette, but you know, this is just gradations of, of one color. Like it's mostly yellow and, and then it's like a greenish yellow, a slightly more green yellow. But it's all in that neighborhood, um, and and on each page, it's just that one color with different values of light and darkness of that color. Um, I guess there's a little, maybe some saturation changes too, but it's it's the same color. Um, so uh, yeah, very limited and stylistic choice that uh, that I'm happy with. But um, maybe in the next one, I might try color. I'm not sure because it wouldn't take too much more time uh, to do the color. Um, potentially, if I figure that out. I've done color work before. Um, so we'll see what I come up with. Here's the cleanup phase. I accidentally, like my uh, white paintbrush pen had leaked onto the page. Like it doesn't happen often, but it dripped on the, this guy's leg, uh, on the raft. And then right there where I'm filling in right now. So I had to go back and, uh, go back over it with uh, the fine pin, the micron, and then with the brush, there's the finished page in full. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see it. And there is the first part. He rushes at her and she doesn't quite make contact with her sword. He doesn't get injured. He just, he jumps back and loses all the momentum he was working on in the fight. Um, gives us a pause in the action instead of go, 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 go. So it was, it worked well too. And it, and it puts him back on his heels. Like it's some of that. And that is it. Uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. 
Um, I do this every Sunday. You can read the comic on the website, ikecomics.com. Links in the description. 